Hi. Now in the previous parts of this question, part D, we calculated the minimum value of A and we found that to the nearest integer it was 85. And in this next part, part E, we've got to show that this value of A is a minimum. Now there's two ways that we can do this. We can either do it by considering the second differential of A with respect to X or we could do it by a table method. And I'll show you both methods, all right? And if you need any further practice on this, just go on my website, examsolutions.net, where I go through in tutorials how to state whether something's a maximum or a minimum. Now, if we're going to do the second differential method, let's just say d2a by dx squared, we need to differentiate dA by dx with respect to x. And in part C here, we found that dA by dx was equal to 4 pi x minus 120 x to the minus 2, or 120 over x squared, same thing for this term. So we can differentiate this in the usual way. Differentiating the first term now just gives us 4 pi. And then when we differentiate the next term, minus 2 times the minus 120 here will give us plus 240. Reduce the power by 1 and you've got x to the power minus 3. And we can rewrite this as 4 pi plus 240 over x cubed. Now all we need to do now is check out the sign of d2a by dx squared when x is taken to be this value here. And if it turns out to be positive then we end up with a minimum. So if we just come down here we can say that when x okay when x equals 2.1215 and so on, the value of d2a by dx squared, if you put it through your calculator, turns out to be 37.701 and so on. A positive value, greater than zero. So therefore, a is a min. Okay. So that's one way of doing it. The other way, as I say, is to consider a table. And when we consider a table, it's a table of the gradients, okay? When we do that, we set up our table. We have our value for x, first of all, that we're testing. And we're testing this value here, and we take a value of x either side of this point. Let's say we take x equals 1. We've got this value here, 2.12 and so on. I'll just do that. I won't write the full value. And we take a value to the right of that. Let's say x is 3. And we test out what the gradient is. In this case, it's dA by dx. Now, when x is 1, if we substitute x is 1 into here, We've got 4 pi times 1, 4 pi minus 120 divided by 1 squared. Okay, remember x minus 2 is 1 over x squared. Well, if you work that out, what you get is a negative number. You get minus 107 and other stuff, okay? So in other words, we've got a negative gradient there. So when we look at the gradient we can see that a negative gradient would be one that is sloping down. All right? Now when we put 2.12 etc into DADX, well that gave us zero. Okay? And the gradient of zero is a stationary point, okay? Flat. And when we put x equals 3 into DA by DX, work that out, 4 pi times 3 minus 120 over 3 squared you end up with a positive number. In fact, it turns out to be 24.3 and so on. So a positive number there. So you've got a positive gradient. So you can see that your curve will be coming round like this, forming a minimum 
at this point here. Okay, so I hope that's given you some idea over how we can find the nature of a stationary point. And as I say, I've got plenty of tutorials on this if you go on my website, examsolutions.net. Okay, well that brings us now to the end of this question.